I'm going to show you how to actually do the correct keyword research. Okay, so let's say you're selling a book on Amazon. First, someone has to actually search for your book. Once they search for it, your book will pop up on their screen and then they can actually click on your book. Once they click on your book, then they can figure out, do I want to buy this book or not? And sometimes they're going to buy it and you get to make money. That's how the whole customer journey works. But guess what? No one's going to buy your book unless they click on it first. But also no one's going to click on your book unless your book actually pops up on their screen first. But what's even more important, your book is never going to pop up on someone's screen if you don't do the correct keyword research. And that's exactly what I want to show you how to do. I want to show you how to do the correct keyword research because as soon as you can do this correctly, then you can start showing off for the keywords you're supposed to show up for. So how do you do the correct keyword research? Well, here's the thing. We know that Amazon reads your titles, subtitles. This is your book, title, subtitle, and this is the buy button or whatever. This is your Amazon page. You have your A-plus content down here, and then you have some reviews down here. This is the page where you go on, you can scroll, and then as you scroll up and down, then you can click buy here and buy your book. So in order for Amazon to even understand what your book is, it's going to read your title, your subtitle. It's going to read your description, which is going to be here. It can read the text under your A-plus content. It can read the review text. It can read your editorial reviews. It's going to go through all the text on your book's listing, and it's going to try and find different keywords to figure out what your book is about. So if Amazon finds the keyword, Horse training book for kids in your title, then horse training book for kids in your description. Then one of the reviews says, Oh, this horse training book for kids was awesome. Then Amazon is going to say, Oh, I'm guessing this is a horse training book for kids. So what it's going to do is going to start showing your book in the search results for the term horse training book for kids, along with all the rest of your competitors. And if you start getting clicks and sales, you're going to start ranking higher and higher in the search results. But here's the thing how do you figure out what keywords to put in your title, subtitle, description, whatever? How do you figure out what keywords to use? And it's so, so important that you do this correctly. I'm going to show you why. If you publish your book and you basically give Amazon no keywords, so you just write a random title, random subtitle, you write your description. And when, you, when you're uploading your book, it's going to ask you for some backend keywords. If you do this incorrectly, you're going to find it very difficult to succeed. Why? Because Amazon doesn't have any data to look at. Amazon doesn't have any keywords to look at in order to figure out where to put you on Amazon in order for you to get sales. And if you don't get sales, Amazon doesn't get money. And if Amazon doesn't get money, you don't get money. Now, guess what? If you publish a brand new book and you don't give Amazon the data, Amazon doesn't care. It's just going to punish your book by ranking it lower and lower. There's hundreds of books being published on Amazon. It doesn't care about your book. It only cares about the book that's going to make it the most amount of money. And if you're publishing a book and not giving it the data that it needs, it's not going to help you out. It's just going to push you so far down the rankings. You're going to be on page five and no one's ever going to be able to find you. A second way you can do this wrong is once you publish a new book, you give it the wrong data. And I see a a lot of people doing this. It sounds dumb, but a lot of people are doing this. If I'm publishing a dog training book, this is a dog training book. I only want to use dog training book keywords. I don't want to use cat training. I don't want to use horse training. I don't want to use pig training. Don't even know if pig training is a thing, but you only want to use keywords that are highly related to your book. Why do you want to use keywords that are only highly related to your book? Because Amazon, when you first publish your book, Amazon is like a little baby. This is a baby. Amazon is like a little tiny baby. It has no idea what's going on around it. It needs all the help it can get. It doesn't know words. It doesn't know anything. If Amazon is a baby and you publish your book and you're giving it keywords left and right from like different subjects, then Amazon is going to get overwhelmed. It's going to show you in the wrong places. And if it shows you in the wrong places, you're not going to get the clicks and you're not going to get the sales that you need. So here's what you're actually supposed to do. Here's what I find that works. So let's say we're going to publish a how to draw book for kids. We're going to teach them how to draw cars for kids. If in your listing, you're including keywords that aren't related to how to draw cars for kids, it's going to confuse Amazon. And if you can confuse Amazon, Amazon can't help you. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see is when people think as soon as you publish your book, your goal is to rank for as many keywords as possible. And this is completely wrong. You don't want to rank for as many keywords as possible as soon as you publish. Now, I'm guilty that I made this mistake as well. I published a brand new book and I just wanted to rank for thousands of keywords in the first month. And it ended up costing me so much money and I completely failed. And I figured out that it was wrong. And here's how to actually do it correctly. If you just try and rank for a bunch of how to draw keywords, then then you probably have around 500 different keywords you can rank for. But if you try and target more specific keywords, then you can start targeting how to draw cars keywords. So how to draw cars for beginners, how to draw cars for kids, how to draw cars for toddlers or whatever. So then you can only basically rank for 50 keywords, but these keywords are more targeted. So if Amazon is a baby and doesn't know anything and is learning, it's going to be easier for Amazon to learn from the 50 keywords than it is for it to learn 
500 keywords. But here's the thing, that's not specific enough. What you're looking for is keywords that are highly, highly, highly related to your book. It needs to tell Amazon exactly what your book is about. So if we're making a how to draw cars for kids, we want keywords that are only related to how to draw cars for kids. So there might only be 10 to 15 keywords maximum, depending on your niche. These are the keywords that we want to target. We don't want to target the 500 keywords. We're not trying to rank for as many keywords as possible. In fact, we're trying to teach Amazon what our book is about. That's the only purpose of keywords, especially in the first 30 days. Now, if we know that our book is a how to draw cars for kids but we don't have monster trucks in our book then are we going to target the keyword how to draw monster trucks for kids some people might say well monster trucks are cars as well maybe someone who's looking for monster trucks is looking for cars sure maybe they are but amazon is going to start showing our book for monster cars and we don't want that we don't want amazon to even think that our book might be a monster car book. We want Amazon to know for a fact what our book is. If Amazon knows for a fact what your book is, it's gonna help you. It's gonna know exactly where to put your book. Amazon knows where to put your book to sell better than you know where to put your book to sell. So we're gonna target how to draw cars for kids, how to draw cars for kids ages eight to 12, how to draw supercars for kids if we have supercars in our book, learn to draw cars for kids, kids drawing books cars, whatever. Whatever the keywords are, the keywords have to be 100% highly specific, highly relevant to your book even if it's 10 to 15 keywords you only need seven keywords at the back end anyway now as soon as you start ranking for these keywords then you can start expanding into bigger keywords because as soon as you start ranking for these you're going to start getting reviews you're going to start getting sales you're going to start getting data amazon's going to know what helps your book who buys your book who doesn't buy your book and as soon as amazon has that data then you can start expanding into broader niches because amazon's going to know where to place you and where not to place you if you go directly into trying to rank for 500 different keywords amazon's going to be so confused it's going to have nothing to look for it, it doesn't even know where to put you it doesn't know what works and what doesn't so first you teach amazon Amazon with highly specific keywords and then once you gain ranking and reviews and sales data then you can broaden your reach and maybe you can start targeting monster truck keywords because maybe someone who's searching for a monster truck might buy your car book but you're not going to test out at the starting phase you don't want to risk anything at the start you want to be 100 specific at the start okay let's imagine that we have four keywords this is keyword one keyword two keyword three and keyword four this keyword gets 15 clicks this is all in the first month this keyword gets 15 clicks this keyword gets 25 clicks this keyword gets four clicks and this keyword gets 100 clicks now if you just look at the keywords you might say this keyword is the most relevant keyword and this keyword is the least relevant keyword and these are just medium but here's the thing Amazon doesn't just look at the clicks. Amazon looks at your sales as well. So let's say this keyword got zero sales. This keyword got one sale. I'm going to put S for sale. Zero sales, one sale. This keyword got three sales. And this keyword also got one sale. Now, without even looking at what the keywords are, without even knowing what the book is, let's just see if the keywords are relevant or not. So 15 people clicked on your book based on this keyword. Is this keyword relevant? No, this is completely irrelevant. What about this one? 25 clicks on one sale. Well, it's it's slightly relevant because you actually got a sale. What about this one? You got four clicks and three sales. So basically almost everyone who clicks on it bought it. Is this keyword relevant? It looks like it. This is highly relevant. And what about this one? You got 100 clicks and one sale. Well, this one got one sale as well, but I only did it with 25 clicks. This one needs 100 clicks. So this is super low relevance. So this is the most relevant keyword. This is slightly relevant. This is the least relevant. And this is basically irrelevant because you didn't get any sales from it. Now, I'm going to show you what the keywords are. And I want you to tell me what you think the book is. So this first keyword is vegetarian cookbook. This keyword is meat cookbook. This keyword is burger cookbook. And this keyword is cookbook for men cookbook for men so just by looking at this what do you think this book is is this book a vegetarian cookbook well it got 15 clicks and zero sales so it's irrelevant so this book popped up for the search term vegetarian cookbook because it was in our listing and we put it in the title and subtitle and it started showing up for that keyword but no one bought it so what is amazon going to say this keyword is irrelevant so it's not a vegetarian cookbook what about this one your second keyword it got 25 clicks one sale is slightly relevant and then it showed up for a meat cookbook so now we know that just by looking at the keywords we know that this book has something to do with meat and it might be a cookbook that's all we know about this one what about this one this one was highly relevant it got four clicks and three sales what is the keyword burger cookbook so is it safe to assume that this book will show you how to make burgers. It's safe to assume that it is going to show you how to make burgers. So it's a burger cookbook. And also, 
you got a sale for meat cookbook and burgers are made from meat. So just by looking at these two keywords, we know that it's a burger cookbook and it shows you how to cook meat burgers. Now, what about this keyword? 100 clicks and one sale. It's got very low relevance and it's just cookbook for men. Is it a cookbook for men? It probably is, but it's just not relevant enough because this is extremely broad. What kind of cookbook is it? Amazon doesn't know what kind of cookbook it is, but with these ones, it knows that it's a burger cookbook. So now it's safe to assume just by looking at the keywords and which ones are relevant and not relevant, we can figure out what this book is about. We know that it's not a vegetarian cookbook because we know that burger cookbook and meat cookbook converted better. So this is a burger cookbook for men. But how does Amazon even know if your keywords are relevant or irrelevant? Well, it's simple. It just looks at the conversion rate. So check this out. Keyword one has 15 clicks and zero sale. So what's the conversion rate? Conversion rate is how many people bought after clicking on it? What percentage of people bought after clicking on it? So this one is a 0% conversion rate because no one actually bought it. What about this one? What percentage of 25 is one? Well, keyword two is a 4% conversion rate. Now we know that the three, we know that 10% conversion rate is the average. So four is below average. People bought it, but it's not the best conversion rate in the world. Now, what about keyword three, burger cookbook? What's the conversion rate? Four clicks and three sales, the conversion rate is 75%. So because the conversion rate is so, so high, we know this is extremely relevant. So Amazon sees the conversion rate and knows that the term burger cookbook is gonna convert super, super well for the book that is being shown. So it's most likely a burger a cookbook. So because the conversion rate is high, Amazon knows, okay, let's show it for more keywords related to burger cookbook, but let's not show it for keywords related to vegetarian cookbook because vegetarian cookbook didn't work, but burger cookbook and meat cookbook worked. So let's show it for more keywords related to burger cookbook. Let's show it for more keywords related to meat cookbook. That's 100 clicks, one, it's just 1% conversion rate. So very, very low conversion rate. It's not gonna show it for cookbook for men because the conversion rate is super, super low. So this is a very, very low, this is still a low conversion rate, 4%, but 75 is extremely high. Amazon is slowly learning based on the conversion rate what keywords are related to your book. So if you go and publish a burger cookbook and you're giving it very broad terms like vegetarian cookbook, because someone might buy the burger cookbook searching for vegetarian cookbook. You're basically just wasting digital real estate that you could have used for better keywords. But if you go in and you give Amazon only highly relevant keywords for your books, then you're teaching Amazon faster exactly what your book is about. And if Amazon knows exactly what your book is about, and what keywords are converting, and you're giving Amazon keywords that you know they're gonna convert for your book because it's exactly what your book is about, it's super, super relevant, then Amazon is gonna know faster where to put you. Now, Amazon is smart. Amazon is not dumb. If you give it the keyword burger cookbook and you start making sales with this keyword, it's not just gonna show you for burger cookbook. It's gonna try burger cookbook for men. It's gonna try for women. It's gonna try for kids. It's gonna try spicy burger cookbook, easy burger cookbook. It's gonna try a bunch of different keywords. Even if you only have 10 keywords. If you give it highly relevant keywords and Amazon sees that your book is making a bunch of sales for these highly relevant keywords, it's going to slowly start to expand your reach by itself. It's going to give you more keywords to index for, but it's not going to do it overnight. You need to build up your sales first. Amazon needs to see that your book is selling for these highly relevant keywords first. And as soon as it sees that you're selling for the highly relevant keywords, it starts spreading you out even more and it starts testing your book for broader keywords. Now, if your book starts selling for those broader keywords as well, guess what Amazon is going to do? It's going to start spreading you out to bigger keywords. And it's just a big, big snowball effect. And it keeps spreading you out to bigger and bigger keywords until it figures out the keywords that you sell for and the keywords that you don't sell for. Amazon is smart. Amazon knows what they're doing. They're here to make money, but you need to help them help you make money. So even if you can't afford Helium 10 or you can't afford keyword research software, go on Amazon, go in the auto search, look at what people are searching for. Look at the keywords your competitors are using in their title and their subtitle and their description. Look at the keywords and only pick the ones Ones that are highly relevant. Now, what are the best keywords? I'm not supposed to be giving you guys this, but I'm still going to give it to you. Here's how you find the best keywords to put in your back end keywords. So, when we did the niche research, we know that first we pick a broad niche, then we pick a sub niche, and then we pick a target audience. This also counts for your keywords. So, our keywords is cookbook. If we're doing the burger cookbook, it's a cookbook. Our sub niche is burgers, and then our target audience is for men. The cookbook is specifically for men. So, when we're going to put a keyword in the back end, keywords is going to be burger cookbook for men because that tells Amazon what your niche is, what your sub niche is specifically and who the book is for. If Amazon knows what your book is and who it's for, 
then it knows exactly where to put you. Now, another question I get is in the back end keywords, should I only put one search term or can I put a bunch of them together? So if I have like 12 keywords, but there's only seven spaces for the keywords in the back end, let's say we're doing a, a burger cookbook and it's for men, boys, teenagers, but they have to be male. In one of the keyword boxes, I can put burger cookbook for men, teenagers, males. Why would I do that? Because Amazon is smart enough to know that a burger cookbook is the keyword and then for men, or for teenagers or for males is the target audience. It can mix and match the keywords in between them. So if someone searches burger cookbook for males, your book can still show up. It can ignore these two keywords and just look at the keywords that is needed. Amazon is smart as long as you give it the correct data. So next time you publish your book, instead of trying to rank for as many keywords as possible, in the first month, try to rank for as many highly relevant keywords as possible. And you're gonna see wonders. The first 30 days, Amazon is gonna learn everything it needs to know about your book. You just have to give it super crystal clear instructions. If you give Amazon crystal clear keywords, Amazon is gonna know exactly where to put you in front of the correct shoppers. And because your keywords are highly relevant to your book, those shoppers are gonna turn into buyers. And if they turn into buyers, Amazon makes money, which means you make money. Now, once you do your keyword research, it's extremely important that you understand the honeymoon period. So if you don't know what the honeymoon period, click on the video that popped up right now and go watch it. I explain everything to do with the honeymoon period so you know how to rank your book in the first 30 days. Now, if you think this video is valuable, these other videos you're going to find super, super helpful. They're going to show you how to make a bunch of money on KDP and make your KDP journey a lot easier.